Welcome to the TMC Newsroom. Rich Tarani here coming to you from Interop 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada. On our program is Peter Blackmore. He is the CEO of Shortel. And um, Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So um, I met you about a year ago. That's right. And um, it's been an interesting time for, for Shortel. You guys have done really well in a uh, competitive market. You made an acquisition, at least one, uh, of M5. Uh, can you give us an overview of just the company and where things are headed? Well, pleased to. The company continues to do very well, uh, we're gaining share all through this year. Uh, our combined growth over the last three quarters of the year is about uh, 16%, and before that we were even higher. And as you're right, we did look at a cloud company, and this was a long uh, process for us. We wanted to make sure that uh, we're making the right decision, understood the market very well, so we actually talked to 25 cloud voice companies before we settled on uh, M5. I've known uh, Dan Hoffman at M5 for, uh, I'm going to say maybe 10, 12 years, something like that, as long as the company's been around. So yeah, good guy, good company, good technology. And it was, it was somewhat regional. And uh, is part of the strategy to take that re regional footprint and kind of grow it out? Exactly. I mean, they, they started on the East Coast rather like Short Hill started on the West Coast, so the two complement each other. Uh, they have doing extraordinarily well. Their financials for last year were just uh, very close to 50 million. Uh, their growth rate is extraordinary, um, and we've now closed on the transaction. We closed on the 23rd of March, so we're looking forward to a full quarter of their revenues in this current quarter. And Dan and the team, we've retained all the executives, almost the whole of the company, so they, they have built a great company, so it's great to have them in the team. Now, uh, getting back to the core business, you've been taking share for a, a number of quarters, a number of years. Why do you think that is? Well, we sell on two key attributes, total cost of ownership, and uh, we understand, if you compare an apples and apples comparison with our major competitors, that we're typically 50% less, if you're, as long as you measure it over a three, five, whatever time frame. And then we have world-class customer satisfaction. We use something called Net Promoter Score, which is the classic way of now measuring customer satisfaction. A Google or somebody else does it the same way. And our Net Promoter Score rating at the moment is 63, which is world class. And our competitors are typically at the 40, 30 level. So the customers see that. Uh, they see the total cost of ownership. And we're just very passionate about continuing to provide best in class support. And hence, I think we win. Now, what about branding and marketing and things like that? It seems like that's an area of differentiation as well. We've steadily built up our brand. Our CMO has done a great job of that because obviously as a smaller company, you've got a smaller budget than some of the bigger players, but we do a lot of branding and we've doubled our brand awareness every year for the last couple of years. Uh, in other words, the recognition I aided or unaided has, has doubled and that's extraordinary. And we do a lot of social media as well to, to reach out in every way we can. I think consistency is key as well. You've been very consistent in having covered this market for, for decades. The inconsistency of other companies uh, in their branding and promotion right. to me has been pretty shocking because you can kill a company's future by losing a lot of share because you just don't have that consistency. So that's, right. that's important. It's great that you're doing it. Now, in terms of the uh, trends you're seeing in the market, are there some things you want to share with us? Obviously, cloud. That's why you made the acquisition, right. but what other things should we know about? Well, I think mobility, and we bought a company called Ajita about 18 months ago, and that's going really well for us, because the standard you see offering can be done in a mobility way, so we're compatible with Android devices, obviously the Apple device, uh, and this is enabling a different user experience for our customers. So we see mobility really, really going from strength to strength, whether it's tablets, it's iPhones, uh, this is changing how people use EC. It increases their productivity. So that's a big trend, and we think we're leaders in that trend. And then cloud, complementing premise, uh, we're now ambivalent. Uh, what I didn't want us to do is be in one part of the market, not the other part of the market. Every time cloud has entered a particular market segment, it obviously has a following, and now we have a best-in-class premise and a best-in-class uh, cloud offering, so we can generally look at the customer and say, we can solve whichever you prefer. And so that flexibility to me sounds like uh, 
something very important because you can start with a premise solution, move to the cloud, right. stick with the same company, or you can probably come up with a great hybrid solution as well, which I imagine is something you're going to focus on. That as is well. something that we'll now put on the roadmap because I think you're absolutely right. You could look at an on premise uh, virtual solution for a headquarters, and then the subsidiaries or peripheral places could be uh, cloud, and you get best of both worlds. So I think there are all sorts of ways we can now provide uh, customers with even richer portfolio. So in terms of uh, some of the things we may have talked about or not talked about in terms of why customers would want to pick Shortel instead of the competition, we talked about service, uh, we talked about support, customer satisfaction, uh, TCO, are there any other reasons? I mean that's a lot of unbelievable amount of reasons. Anything else that people should know that are watching this trying to decide who they're going to pick to provide their communications? Well, I think there's also another trend, and it, it plays heavily to our concept of brilliant simplicity, because that's the tagline that we use, and underlying the, the reason for that tagline is how you approach the customer, and then how do you approach the user. So we're looking all the time to improve that user experience, uh, so it's as rich and intuitive as it can be, because I think that wins a lot of hearts and minds out there, and we are much simpler to use it than the, the competition. So what's next for the company? In terms of product or? Growth, product, it's really up to you to answer okay. how you'd like. Well, we have releases of Shortel 13, Shortel 14 coming. Uh, that SIP enables all our phones. Uh, so we're moving to a new generation of phone system. And that'll be available in about eight months time. Uh, we're also doing improved contact center capability. We've got a very rich contact center, but improving that. And then on the cloud offering, we're moving our mobile offering to them. They already have it running in a demo environment. It'll be launched by July timeframe. So we're also looking at the R&D the two teams had and leverage what we can to provide even better user experience. Excellent. Peter, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you. Great. Appreciate it.